There are people who believe that head hopping in novel writing is bad practice. To those people I say, y'all can kiss my ass. Hi, I'm Marcus and I'm the idiot on the writer's block. If you're new to the channel, I, the idiot, ask experts for tips on how to write, publish and promote my first fiction novel. Check this playlist right here, but maybe click it after this video. Now I mentioned head hopping earlier. Head hopping is a term used in novel writing for when the author switches the perspective of a scene from one character to another. Often the entire novel would be from the perspective of one character, or you may have multiple main characters through whose vision you get to see the story play out. Now recently in my research I've come across writers who have said that frequent head hopping should be avoided at all costs. But here's the problem, I head hop like a hip hop rabbit on crack. Seriously. There's a point in Atticus the Mighty where even the pheasants getting chased get a perspective. And I like writing like that. But apparently that's a bad thing? I read an article from standoutbooks.com where they insist that head hopping hurts your writing. And like I said, they weren't the first ones that I heard say that. Some have said that if you're going to change perspectives, you should use different chapters to make it easier to read. Meg Latour uses that exact strategy in The Cyborg Tinkerer, alternating between the perspectives of two main characters with each chapter. But then again, Douglas Adams head hopped into the perspective of a whale seconds before it fell to his death and then immediately hopped into a bowl of petunias and it was freaking beautiful. If you haven't read The Ultimate Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, seriously, what are you doing with your life? And so to get an idea or a perspective as to how to carry on, I have to throw this question onto the writer's block. Is there a problem with head hopping in novel writing? And here are some experts with advice on head hopping in novel writing. All right, so so in the first instance, I generally don't head hop. If you read most of my books, it's like very rare that I'll do that because I generally, personally, do not like it so much. Just as for myself writing, I love to read it. I'm, I've got no problem with reading it, but, but I personally am not a fan of doing it myself. I just don't have that inclination. I've got no problem with it actually. You know, it's not something I think. Oh, you should never head hop. And you know, you know, there's, there's many great writers who do it to great effect. And I love seeing it done really well. But generally, I tend to keep uh, one perspective. Although, you know, if you look in the scholar, my first book, I'm head hopping in that book you know uh so so I, it's not something it's not a hard and fast rule if i need to do it or i think it serves the book the book's purpose or if i've established a kind of um omniscient perspective then i'll generally head hop but if i'm more lower down to the ground and i'm more talking like with marcus i'm right there with marcus you're kind of seeing everything through his eyes uh with the scholar you would but already head hopping between two characters, Sean and Corey. So that, because that was the rule that I'd set up, that you're going to see Sean and Corey's perspective, then it's okay to see maybe one other random person like Rosie or Levi, sometimes you saw his perspective. But in this book, I've kind of established that it's just Marcus you're seeing the books, uh, you're seeing the story uh, from. So so I think it, it's, it's, it's uh, I've got to stay there really. I've established my own rules, I've set up my own rules and I think I should stay there. My, my advice to people who want to head hop is, is establish the rules really early on, you know, like just, you know, uh, make sure that you do this in a timely fashion and, and then stick to that. So you decide in your own head how many people you're going to head hop to and what the rhythm of that is going to be. Is it going to be within chapters? Is it going to be separate chapters for each person? Is it going to be, sometimes I've seen it where you have a whole section which is one person and then the next section is another person and then the other section goes back to that person at a different time. That's a really good uh, rhythm, you know? And once you can set up some kind of rhythm where you're saying, okay, these are the rules of my world, these are the rules of my narrative structure, no one can tell you anything, you know? Um, I mean, my favorite head hopping book I have to say is Ulysses. I really love the way he does that and I think he set up the rules you know once he set up the rules then you, you know what's going on and I would love to do it one day and do it really well here's my issue with head hopping my issue with head hopping is that I feel a lot of the time you don't get to follow everybody's story and I think the beauty of Ulysses is it doesn't matter <laughs> whereas in most books you're trying to set up these multiple arcs and you don't have the space in the book 
to, to actually carry those arts right through to their logical conclusion. Whereas, like I said, in Ulysses, it's just like, okay, so these, these other arts kind of don't matter. It's still about this one person that we're following, you know? So, uh, generally. So, I think, um, yeah, yeah. I, I just think that you've just got to be really careful about knowing what you're doing, and then it's fine. This really, it comes down to point of view, which is, um, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, how you set up your reader's expectations at the beginning of the book and how consistent you are as a writer. So if you start your book in um, a limited third person where you're focusing on one viewpoint character, right? Um, and telling the story through them. And then all of a sudden you shift to another character without any grounding or warning and then shift back um, do just to convenience of the story and if you don't keep consistent with that uh that is a problem but if you start out in omniscient point of view um which i actually happen to love um then and you're consistent with it then it then i think it's fine i um it, omniscient point of view is really hard to write and write well but when it's done it's it's a joy to read at least for me um, some books that I think do it so well, um, you know, the Penderwicks uh, by Jean Birdsall and uh, the Van de Beekers. Omniscient Point of View works really, really well with a kind of an ensemble cast where you have do have one main protagonist, but you have three or four others. Um, I have one client, um, Callie Miller, who writes beautiful fantasy and she writes great omniscient point of view so the thing that we pay attention to in our our um our edits are making sure that you're not just going back and forth back and forth like you want to shift to a different character ground in that character give their point of view and then shift back so it's not usually all in one paragraph usually it's for a series of beats um and then, and then there's a transition to another character. So it, you're not, it's, it's a purposeful and grounding um, act. I can read head hopping novels just fine. Um, usually I would say most older authors uh, actually do the head hopping thing and they do it artfully and beautifully. My, one of my challenges that I have is I critique on forums um, and help new writers write better. And as I do that, the number one biggest issue that I see when people write in, in that like third person omniscient way is that they are confusing the reader constantly. You don't have a clear sight of who is in charge of that scene or what the point of the scene really is. And so while I can read it, and it's fine whenever someone that really knows what they're doing is doing it well, when it comes to an aspiring author or a new author, uh, it can get really bad if they haven't watched closely on how, how to really bring out the best of that scene. If I jump into this first, uh, only because I've recently written the first draft of a novella, a horror novella, which is the premise is, um, I won't go into too much detail, but there's 10 people in this story and it's a very confined sort of space and they go through a very, very quick journey in a few days, if that makes sense. It's very compact. So there is a lot of bouncing around from character to character in that story. Now, the one thing I had back from beta readers is they, there was obviously some great feedback, which I, I took in very well, but there was a lot of feedback that was like, I, I'd like to see more of this and more of this, which was brilliant for me. And that's exactly what anyone wants from a beta reader. But the only criticism I kind of got, and it's not, it is criticism, but it's not. And it was about the perspective. So there was one or two people that thought the, pers the perspective was confusing, just like you mentioned with your story. So what they wanted to see was a perhaps a more clearer transition between the perspective jumps. So that's my advice would be to look more in detail at the transition because as writers ourselves, we already know that story in our head. We're writing it, but we know what's gonna happen and who that character jumps to. 
but the reader doesn't often know what we're thinking. So we need to make sure, like you said, with screen, screenwriting is kind of, this is what happens, that's what happens, that's what's happened. And that's like our minds as a, as a writer, but as a reader, that's not what they see. So we need to explain the fact that they are going from this character to that character and the scene is transitioning as well. So that's my advice is to make that transition a lot smoother so that the reader does understand that. Yeah, I think on this, I'm a big fan of the um, chapters in terms of utilizing chapters for what they're actually for. And if you head hop into another character, giving them a clear defined chapter, um, I've seen a lot of great writers do it. Mm. And uh, to be honest, I think it's the best, best possible way. Like if you think, ooh, like Gone Girl, for example, that switches different chapters different perspectives sometimes it's the same events that happen but you get a different perception from somebody else's viewpoint and the chapter has changed and i think that is the clearest way to make it obvious to your reader um, that you've swapped over and i don't think they're i think if you stick to that your chapters they could they could be a page you could have a chapter that's a page and then you could skip to somebody else as long as you know i think it makes it clearer to whoever's reading it so that's, that would be my advice. Seriously, okay, I deeply respect the opinions of all my experts, but I don't know how to break the head hopping habit. And I don't know if I want to, because I love it. I love it. I love it. It is just, it, it can be manic. For me, it is just, the, it's just the way to go. In Atticus the Mighty, I've already talked about the fact that I jump into the perspective of a pheasant, which I think is, uh, it's my it's my writing, but I think it's just, I think it's hilarious. But also there's this other bit where we jump into the, into the perspective of this guy who's going through a portal. You don't even know his name. He's going through a portal and he's coming out into certain death and you follow his perspective for a little bit. Now I know some of you are thinking, that's, that's horrible, I can't, that's just, that I, I can't deal with that. I think head hopping is great if you do it well. I like to head hop and I hope I do it well. I guess the only way I can find out if I'm good at it is for people to read my book. And so when it comes out, give me your comments. I'd love to hear your comments on it. And don't forget to like, share, more comments and subscribe to the channel for more tips on how to write, publish and promote your fiction novel. I'm Marcus and I'll see you next time.